G'day guys, Luke McElroy from Mets Performance Consulting signing on. Uh, I get a lot of questions about the type of training that I prescribe to my athletes and the people that come through the doors and uh, a common theme that we see is that I do a, I prescribe a lot of lower volume but higher quality training. So we're looking at you know that high intensity interval training you know, being very specific to hitting hitting each zone, each interval that we do. So um, that's going a little bit against the sort of flow of things for those triathlon, marathon runners, the longer distance endurance events. So one thing that I really want to push to people and actually show is that you can get as good a benefit, if not more benefit, from doing half or even a third of the work if it's done the right way. So one thing that I'm going to be doing over the next month is actually training up my partner Eliza. And, and what it's going to involve is we're going to do a VO2 max test today, which I'll show on after this video. We're going to do a two kilometer time trial flat out, <clears throat> probably tomorrow or Thursday. Uh, and what we're going to do is three times a week, only three times, for half an hour tops, so a total training volume of 90 minutes a week. We're going to track her progress over four weeks and maybe into six weeks. And we're going to do the exact same test again. So we're going to do a VO2 max test, exact same protocol, and we're going to do the exact same two kilometer time trial at an athletics track. And what we're going to do after that is we're going to compare the data, so the heart rate, the pace, ventilation, etc., from her testing you know, today and tomorrow and what it is in four to six weeks time. And the reason I'm doing this is because I just want to show people that volume is not the be all and end all for endurance events. Um, it is obviously important. We have to be able to complete the distance that we're trying to race. So we do need that volume aspect, but it is absolutely critical that we get the right quality intense sessions in as well if we want to optimize performance. So what we're going to do this time is just show you simply 90 minutes of training a week um, and we're going to see some massive improvements in not only the VO2 max test, but we're going to see some significant improvements in the 2K time trial. And you might be saying, oh, how do we know that she's not going to go easy on the test now and then go harder you know, in, in four weeks' time when we do it again? We're going to have the exact same data plotted next to each other. So we're going to see that when Eliza's running at you know, six minute pace, for example, on a treadmill, maybe her heart rate will be 150 today. Whereas when it's six minute pace in four or six weeks time, uh, her heart rate's only you know, 140, which is a 10 beats, 10 beats lower. So there's no tricking the system. We're gonna compare the physiological data with the speed that we're going at, and we're gonna see the improvements in simply 90 minutes of, of exercise a week. So stay tuned. Uh, I'll be doing videos probably, or well, I'm gonna video every training session, so three times a week we'll see some videos. And uh, please follow the progress as we go. Any questions, let me know. And, um, again, we'll, we'll see how we go by just doing 90 minutes a week. Thanks guys, take it easy. So this is a copy of Eliza's physiological data, which we just got from a VO2 max test. So it's broken down into 30 second intervals, and we've got all the data we need. We've got ventilation, so how much air she's breathing in, how many breaths per minute she's taking, her heart rate, a fraction of expired oxygen, which is how much 
oxygen her muscles are actually extracting from her um, from the air that she's breathing in each minute. We've got a VO2 max value and we've got a speed here. So we started the test off pretty comfortable pace, six kilometers an hour. So yeah, you know, just above walking pace really. Um, we increase that by half a kilometer every minute until she wouldn't go any longer. So if we go down, scroll down here, we'll see that she hit her VO2 max uh, actually 11 minutes in. So a little bit before her max speed, which is quite normal. You often see that plateau in VO2 max. That's what we sort of want to see. So we see that she got to 91 litres of ventilation. She was breathing, you know, 54 times a minute, up to 60 by the end, so she's pretty maxed out. Heart rate 188, peaked at 190, and this VO2 max value here is 44.6. And this is at 11 k's an hour, but we ended up getting to 12 k's an hour, which is five minute pace. So what would you expect to see over the next four to six weeks is that uh, the heart rate here is gonna decrease quite significantly. Will also decrease this fraction of expired oxygen because her muscles will be better at extracting it out so we can use up a larger proportion of that. Uh, we breathe 21% in and 17% out at rest but the elite guys can really get that down to sort of uh, you know 14% uh, or high 14s low 15% is pretty good which means that we're actually extracting more oxygen out. Uh, so that'll go down and the VO2 as a result that will go up at a lower heart rate and ventilation will remain similar, It'll probably go a little bit higher just because we'll be doing uh, high intensity interval training. So she'll get more mentally adapt to you know, pushing herself through that pain barrier. And as we said, stay tuned and we'll see the results. Thanks guys, take it easy.